All right, golfers, we were doing a Q&A on our Instagram story yesterday. Somebody asked a wonderful question about what are some of the possible cases why the hips would stall out at the bottom. I thought it would make for a great video, so I'm going to go through some possible scenarios here, okay? Now, obviously, there's tons of reasons why this would happen. It is case by case to some degree, but we're going to go through the two more common ones that we see on our lesson D pretty consistently. Now, first one, all about the club face, okay? So club face at the end of the day is the key contributor to what's going to happen at the bottom of the swing. Obviously, it dictates a lot. If the club face is open, the golfer is going to compensate in a variety of ways to try to get it closed. And a lot of times that comes at the sacrifice of the pivot, meaning not just the hips, we're going to refer to both here, meaning we're going to refer to the upper body as well. Now, what happens when a player tries to rotate well through the ball? Meaning what, what is the domino effect of things that take place when we actually are turning well through it? Well, number one, the more I rotate my body through the golf ball, obviously I'm going to get more on top of it. I'm going to have a more passive release, right? I'm not going to flip as much if my body's rotating through. You hear these things a lot, but there's going to be a specific change that's going to happen to the club face. When the hands and arms get more passive because we're rotating our body well, that means that the club face is not turning over nearly as fast, right? Well, if you have a golfer who rotates really well, chest gets out of the way. As the chest gets out of the way, the shoulder gets out of the way. As the shoulders get out of the way, the hands work with the body. So naturally, the golfer is going to deliver a little bit more lean to the shaft when we're rotating more as opposed to less. But then on top of that, the forearms are going to be a lot more passive as our body turns. Well, all of these things mean that the club face is not going to close nearly as quickly when we're rotating, right? The arms being more passive means we don't have a lot of forearm rotation. So the club face is not going to turn over in that scenario. And then on top of that, we've had videos in the past talking about this, but the more lean to the shaft that a player adds at the bottom, the more the face angle wants to actually deflect open. Meaning if I rotate well, I add more shaft lean. Well, if I add more shaft lean, look at where my club face is starting to point as I'm doing that. It's starting to open up. So the problem that we're experiencing now is the more rotation a player has, the harder it is, believe it or not, to square an open club face. Meaning if a golfer is coming down into the golf ball and the club face is already open, right? Me trying to rotate through this golf ball is virtually impossible because it's going to leave the club face so open with how passive my arms are going to stay and how much shaffling I'm going to add to an already open club face. That ball has no chance of starting anywhere near my target. So it's virtually impossible for a player to stay in posture and rotate really well when you have a face angle that's wide open coming into the golf ball. It just won't work. And the reason it won't work is because we have an intended target in mind. Obviously, if I hit into a net and there's no real focus and there's no real target, you can get away with things looking good on camera. That's why I always tell players not to put too much emphasis on practice swings because it's not really uh, a true example of your golf swing because there's no intended target in mind, meaning our brain doesn't need to compensate for anything, right? And so I can have a wide open club face and look really good and passive through the golf ball on a practice swing, but that doesn't mean I can recreate that because my ball is trying to get to a target. So as soon as the ball is on the ground, my body is going to change the way it moves to try to get me there. That's why you have to be careful. And so if I have this intended target in my mind and having an open club face and trying to rotate through the ball is going to lead to that result, well, obviously, I'm just not going to do it anymore. There's no reason for me to do it because it doesn't allow me to play good shots, no matter how good it looks on camera. So what is the most common compensation that's created through that? Well, it's an early release pattern, meaning the golfer is going to take the face angle that's open and they're going to release the hands early meaning they're going to scoop at it and throw their wrist angles in an attempt to try to square the club face up. Well, why do I need to, um, you know, stall out my body and not rotate when I'm early releasing? Well, there's a prime example of that. If my club face is open coming down and I'm trying to square it up through this loss of wrist angles at the bottom, right? I lose my structure of all these good mechanics we talk about. Well, if I try to come into the golf ball and I throw my angles, but I'm staying in my posture, I'm just going to dump this club straight into the ground. It doesn't allow me to do it because as soon as I throw my angles at the ball, specifically my wrist angles here I'm referring to, to try to square this open club face, I'm lowering this club head into the ground as I do that. And so I'm going to hit everything heavy if I try to stay in my posture and turn as I'm doing this at the same time. So when you see a lot of early extension of the spine, what you have to understand is that early extension is not there because it wants to be there. It's there because it's trying to give you a chance 
of making decent contact on the ball, meaning you have an element of throwing your wrist angles to square the face that's lowering the club head into the ground. And then you have early extension of your spine, meaning standing up as a way of raising the low point off the ground. The two offset each other. It gives you a chance of making some decent contact on the ball. So if I try to stay in my posture with an open club face and I turn, well, I'm going to block everything. If I try to stay in my posture, even if I stall and I try to throw my wrist angles at it, I'm just going to dump this club four inches behind the golf ball and hit everything heavy. So the early extension of the spine is the reaction to the fact that you're straightening your arms and wrists out to try to square the club face. So one leads to the other. You know, there's a lot of different variations of stalling. You see some golfers obviously slow down the hips and they tilt back away from the target. This is not something that's done very often with an open club face. I would say you see much more of the early extension type of stalling with this scenario. The reason is because if I take an open club face and I now tilt back when I stall out, well, tilting back actually takes the face angle and it opens it up even further. So obviously my body is not going to tilt back to open a club face that's even that's already open even further because then I'm just going to hit it a mile, obviously, to the right for me as a right-handed golfer. So the first most common reason a player stalls out is because of the face angle and the type of stalling we'll usually see is early extension to try to save the low point when you're throwing your angles at the ball to try to square the club face. It's a ripple effect that takes place and your brain a lot of times is doing these things subconsciously to try to give you a chance again of not only making good contact but obviously trying to hit your target. What is scenario number two? Well, scenario number two involves the movement of the club and it not necessarily being the most efficient. So obviously everybody on the internet now talks about this idea of shallowing the club. Well, why do we talk about shallowing the club and why is it necessary? Well, let's dive into it a little bit further. Again, we're going to take the scenario of let's try to rotate and stay in our posture through the golf ball. What does that do to the club? Meaning all else being equal, let's not manipulate the club in any way. Let's not manipulate the face angle in any way. Let's just put the club on a certain angle coming down, right? Well, all else being equal, as I stay in my posture, stay in my tilts, and I try to rotate through the golf ball, as I'm doing this, is this club head working more behind me or more in front of me? Well, very clearly, this club head is working more in front of my body. Right away, that means that if I don't have a shallowing mechanism of this club in transition, and I try to rotate my body and stay in my posture, this club is going to come down very steep on the ball. The club head's going to work to the outside really aggressively, and I'm going to cut way across this golf ball. Well, if I cut across this golf ball and my face is closed, I'm just going to hit some straight pulls. If I cut across this golf ball and the face is even remotely square or open, the ball is going to have a lot of curve away from the target. And in my case, to the right, again, as a right-handed golfer, meaning it's going to slice. And so in order for me to be able to stay in my posture, stay in my tilts and create rotation, I need something to offset what the rotation wants to do to the shaft because the rotation wants to take this club head and work it in front of my body in the downswing. And so in order for me to rotate my body and not stall out, right, I need something to offset the angle of the club. This is why a lot of golfers on the internet are such a big advocate of shallowing the angle of the shaft because now you're going to have a mechanism that is dropping this club head behind your body which is what we, a lot of golfers are calling shallowing, right? We have an element of the club dropping behind the body, which is going to offset the rotation that wants to work the club head more in front of the body. You see, the more I rotate, if I don't manipulate this club here, the more I rotate, the more the club wants to work in front of me. And so if my club head is not shallowing out in transition and I try to rotate, well, this club is just going to work way out in front of me and I'm going to end up in trouble. Now my tech angle gets too steep. My path gets way too severe, and obviously I'm not going to hit it very well. And so you'll see a lot of stalling coming from not only the hips, but the torso, the chest, right? The whole pivot included in general. You're going to see a lot of stalling from players to try to find a way to add the shallowing mechanism that doesn't exist. Meaning a golfer that comes down with the club head way too steep. Well, if I rotate from here, I'm in no man's land. I'm not going to hit it well. And so my body stalls out as a way to try to shallow this club. Because I don't have that shallowing mechanism naturally, 
I'm creating it through a compensation. The compensation is the sacrifice of my body rotating through the ball. I'm stalling to try to make that happen. So what types of stalling do you see? Well, now in this scenario, unlike the early extension of the open club face and the early release, you'll see a much more, you'll see two common themes that will happen. Either the golfer will do what I spoke about at the end of the first scenario, which is a lot of trail side bending. For me as a right-handed golfer, my trail side is my right side. That just means bending my right side away from the target. And why does that happen? Well, because if my angle of my club is very steep and I side bend towards my trail side a lot, you see me shallowing this club, right? Again, all else equal. I'm not manipulating the club here. I'm leaving my wrists and arms and club the same. If I just tilt away from the target, I'm shallowing the club. So now this golfer subconsciously is taking a shaft angle that's very steep and they're trying to find a way to shallow it out. It comes at the cost of you rotating well through the ball. You're stalling to make that work. Obviously, it's very timing based. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be good shots all the time, but it gives you a chance of not cutting across it. It gives you a chance of shallowing this club out. That would be one of the more common themes. The second one is early extension. Early extension is not just something that is specific to early releasing and trying to square the face up. If I stand here in my posture, right, and this club, again, let's say it's very steep and I don't have the shallowing mechanism. If I push my pelvis forward, meaning my weight goes into my toes and my lower body goes forward, which a lot of times you'll hear people talk about the butt coming off the wall, right? If I do that, well, there's going to be a reaction to my upper body as well. This is not an isolated movement for my hips. If I stand here and I just push my pelvis forward, in reaction to that, my spine is going to extend and straighten up. Well, if I take this club angle that is very upright and I am now standing up and early extending and pushing my pelvis forward, as my spine stands up, the weight of the club is following, falling back behind my body, meaning I'm taking an angle of the club that's steep, I'm early extending, and that early extension drops the club to the inside. Again, it's not ideal. It's going to lead to a lot of timing elements. You're not going to hit it perfect every time, but it is a compensation that your body is making in an effort to try to take that club and get it to drop to the inside so that you don't get too steep and cut across the golf ball. Okay, so those are the two most common reasons. Obviously, there's a lot of different cases of why a player would do it. The reason why a player is getting steep varies from player to player, right? The reason why your face angle might be open, again, varies from player to player. There's a lot of different variables at play. But if we're just talking in a general sense of why would the hips stall out of the bottom, these are far and away the two most common that we come across in our lesson tee.